Yeah, I'm going to start, though, with this Titans news. It looked like everything was fine. It looked like they had finally reached a point where they were not generating positive tests. They had gone multiple days of negative tests. They were ready to go back to work today in advance of their looming game on Sunday against the Buffalo Bills until the news came early this morning that the Titans once again have positive tests, which means the plug has been pulled indefinitely once again on the Titans' ability to return to work, throwing into doubt the question of whether or not the Bills and the Titans will play this weekend. And there won't be an easy fix like there was last week because the Titans have already had their bye. The bye is gone. If they can't play this game Monday night, and oh, by the way, the Bills are scheduled to play next Thursday night, so probably won't be another Monday night doubleheader this week. This is a game that would be part of, presumably, Week 18, unless they just scrap the game or unless they declare a forfeit, which has been threatened by the league, but which no one really believes the league would do because when you start forfeiting games, you start not getting paid for games and players start not getting paid. Shireen still gets paid for today, even if we can't keep her signal up consistently. <laughs> Hello, Shireen. Welcome to the program. I missed you. I think I think Sims was over there playing video games or something with my <laughs> my high speed internet. I could hear you. I just you couldn't see me apparently. Well, we can't hear or see the Tennessee Titans. And I was just talking now about how you make up the Bills Titans game if this stream of positives that was interrupted for a couple of days continues there is no easy answer this time around yeah they probably are going to have two options you had add a week to the end of the season especially if we start to see more games postponed which i have a feeling we're going to see let's hope not but but you do have a feeling it's leaning that way that we're going to have more postponements uh, as we move along here and the second option obviously would be you play however many games you play and it goes to winning percentage and that's what you end up with and maybe it's like the strike shortened season when they just lump everybody together and go hey the percentages of the top however many teams make the playoffs but we're not doing divisions and all that sort of thing but yeah they're getting into a crunch here uh, to try to make this thing work You're referring primarily to 1982, back when you and I were both 17 years old and the NFL played only nine games that year because of a strike. The thing, though, is everyone played nine games. This is unprecedented, at least in the modern era. I suspect that if we look at the record and fact book all the way back to the early 20s, there may have been years where some teams played fewer games than others. But since the merger... At a minimum, she goes again. She doesn't like what I'm saying. Since the merger, at a minimum, every team has played the same number of games. And that's really the challenge here because once the fans start to process the idea that some teams may play fewer than 16 games and others are going to play 16 and maybe some will play 14, that's just not going to sit well with anyone. So that's something that we need to be concerned about. I was on with Chris Mad Dog Russo last hour, and he raised an interesting point about the options for extending the regular season. And one of the concerns is if we start adding weeks to the regular season, you could have teams that have two, three, four weeks off before they play their playoff game, especially the teams that earn a bye. There'll be two of them this year. They ordinarily have two weeks between games. They would have three if we had a week 18. They would have four if we had a week 19. He suggested the possibility of taking week 17 as it currently is, moving it to week 18, so that teams would have week 17 off unless they have to make up a game. They'd play week 18, and then the postseason starts the following week, eliminating that unexpected bye week for the teams that don't need to make up a game. That's a possibility, but we may need two weeks of make-up games to get this season in, and it's going to be a challenge. We've only got 40, what is it, 64, 63 games played because Bills and Steelers wasn't played. 63 games played. That means 193 to go. Is that right? My math is rarely right. And in that case, it may be correct. 193 games left to be played. And who knows how many of them will ultimately be played this season. The Titans are in trouble for multiple reasons. We had believed that the league was going to place blame on the Tennessee Titans for the pandemic outbreak that they have endured. The argument is from the league, and this is something multiple coaches are sensing. The league's position is, if you follow our protocols to the letter, you'll be fine. 
So if you're not fine, you must not have followed our protocols to the letter, so it's your fault. So we're going to look to place blame on you and find fault with you and punish you if you have an outbreak that results from not following our protocols. Because if you follow our protocols, you won't have an outbreak. So ipso facto, you must not have followed our protocols. We're going to punish you. The Titans already have that working against them. Now this news that seems to have been admitted by guard Roger Saffold that the Titans got together last week and had a Tom Brady-style practice at a local high school, that's going to make it even worse. And I've been told that the talking league circles, and there's the photographs of the workouts involving men much older and larger than what you typically see on a high school field, I've been told that the league could end up imposing historic punishment on the Titans for this. Because this is defiance. This isn't well, it's better to ask for forgiveness than it is to ask for permission. So we're going to interpret a rule incorrectly, and then you get whacked, and you find out maybe it would have been better to ask for permission. This is thou shalt not do it and immediately turning around and doing it. That's why the Titans are facing that double whammy and the possibility that they are going to get hit in a way that no team has ever been hit before by the National Football League. That all is still pending. And the main thing is they got – 11 players who have now tested positive over the past two weeks. Corey Davis is uh, the latest receiver who was a top 10 draft pick by the Titans and still an important member of the offense, although maybe not as good as he was supposed to be. You still need to have these guys. They're going to be shorthanded if they play this weekend. And again, I don't know that they can play. And if they can't play, I don't know when they're going to play the Bills-Titans game. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.